Hey, this is Dave from MetalEpidemic.com. Thank you for checking out our YouTube video. Please feel free to hit the subscribe button below if you like this type of content, and we hope you enjoy the review. So, album review time, gentlemen. And for this review, Duncan, Kyle, and myself have been checking out the new album from Russian sludge quartet Montezuma's Revenge. The band's new album, SWIM, will be released on July 23rd via DTH Records. Um, having released a steady stream of music since around 2004 and shared stages with the likes of Crowbar, Down, Macedon and Red Fang, Montezuma's Revenge are ready to unleash their third full-length album this July. The album was recorded and mixed at DTH Studio by Andrew Astro Gankin and mastered by James Plotkin. So, gentlemen, uh, Montezuma's Revenge, which I think I think is some sort of diarrhea. <laughs> I think is it no? Is that no something you get when you're abroad? Like if you vet like dodgy food or weird I'm water rusher, I guess. I'm not I've a clue. We've never record. come across the term before. I think it's something to do with I've Mexico. I've heard of it before, but. Anyway, uh, we uh, we played one of the singles from this album on one of our podcasts a couple of months back, uh, and I really dug what these guys were doing. I'd never heard of them before, but there was there was something about the kind of tone that really appealed to me. Um, they are, as I said, a sludge band at their core, but there's also little elements in there of kind of doom and stoner and uh, some kind of atmospheric moments on this album as well. But my my very first thought when I hit play on track one was. Church of Misery. That was the first thing that came in my mind. As soon as that first track kicked in, I was like, whoa, wait a minute. The the swagger and like, almost like the little kind of southern tales that they put on the end of the riffs. Mm -hmm. Very reminiscent of Church of Misery. Um, even the, the kind of the sample thing at the beginning of the track as well. I was like, that's quite, you know, it, it reminded me of Thy Kingdom Scum by uh, Church of Misery, which has loads of samples and stuff. Um, but it, it didn't, it didn't necessarily continue down that path like it, it wasn't like a full album with that um and I, I, to be honest i would have been absolutely fine if they had just done a full album with that because i love that sort of stuff but um they instead they kind of keep you guessing on this album like when it goes into track two um mine it, um it goes down a more stoner route on that track uh see what i did there it's got that kind of grisly kind of southern but slightly more ominous kind of feeling about it uh definitely some more kind of doomier vibes infused in the track as well but what i loved about it was just how dirty this sounds you know what i mean just like the, the overall tone of it the bass what's it that tone in the bass like it is thick it is clangy it's, it's right out in front of the mix you can hear it really really well in the mix the guitars are just pure filth um and in a good way obviously um so I just I love the sound of this straight away, um, and then the album just kind of keeps changing gear on you. Um, you get tracks like uh, "New You," which are a, a kind of more kind of sludge soaked, like the kind of grooves that you heard on the opening track. But it's this time it's infused with like organ sounds and and clean melodies coming in it as well. They're like what, what the fuck? But fantastic. Really like the clean melodies on this. Really kind of hook laden stuff that just kind of lures you in and then doesn't let you go. Um, a bit, and I love that like kind of occult streak from the, the organ as well. I thought that was a really clever idea to kind of weave that in. Kep, it really keeps the, things interesting and it, it gives the track a kind of a different tone to the previous tracks. Um, and it's not something they kind of abandon after that track either. They do experiment with it more uh, throughout the album on tracks like Weekend Valhalla. Um, for me, there was, there was a, a, a couple of tracks in the middle of the album for me that kind of lost a little bit of the momentum of the album. Um, I liked that they were trying something more atmospheric on Winter, but um, it, it kind of worked on its own as a kind of breather track in the middle. Um, but it's then they follow up with a, a track called Cots right after it, and it's, it's kind of like another kind of interlude type track. Um, so I don't know what it was, but it, it just felt like there was a little bit of a lull in the kind of middle of the release. Uh, but thankfully they, they get back on track with uh, Comfort of the Sick, which is again another great mix of big, kind of filthy riffs, really catchy vocal melodies. Um, it reminded me a little bit of um, Orchid, the, the Californian kind of doom band, 
Um, Montezuma are probably slightly sludgier overall, but Melodies definitely reminded me of Orchid in certain ways. Um, the last track is the longest on the album, in just over 8 minutes. Um, and this was actually a track that appeared uh, as a demo on their debut. Um, it's a little more experimental, I suppose. It has more kind of progressive characteristics, um, stylistically, and, and vocally the melodies are quite... It reminded me kind of, kind of a kind of grunge kind of feel in the vocals on that last track. Um, and I liked it, I did like the last track, but there was something about the production of the, the last track that sounded a little different to the rest of the album. So it did kind of take me out of things because it felt slightly detached from the rest to me. Um, production definitely sounded cleaner on that last track, especially in the drums. Um, I, say, I did like the track, it just it was a weird kind of switch of tone on that last track. But um, overall, um, I actually really enjoyed this one. Um, it ticks a lot of boxes, style-wise for me. Um, and I think the, these guys do it really well. As I said earlier, they've been on the go for like since early 2000, 2004 or something. Um, I especially liked a lot of the clean melodies because it's not something that you'd usually, it's, it's not something you usually hear a lot of or is associated with kind of sludge music. Um, but I, I really liked the mix that they brought on this album. Um, nothing really that major, um, kind of negative wise uh, for the album. As I said, there was a little bit of kind of lull in the middle uh, for me, and the last track sounded a little bit removed from the rest of the album. But that aside, um, I really liked this. I would definitely check out more material from these guys. Uh, quite impressed. Uh, Duncan, you're a man that likes his sludge. What did you think of this? So yeah, I'd never heard of them before until we played their single, and um, I will be honest with you, I was more than just a little bit curious to see how it was going to play out. This album is a weird little oddity that made me smile from pretty much start to finish, mostly for the reasons that you mentioned earlier on about trying to get a, a kind of handle on exactly where it was going. The are a band that at times completely defy what should work within sludge music. It's not even just the melody that you mentioned, because there are bands that do melody, but melody and sludge tends to be a bit more gruff, or very much uh, in line with doom style melody. So, you know, like kind of Ozzy Osbourne sound and yeah. stuff. Um, that's not what you get here. You get a more kind of mid to high range vocal, which soars. It's actually more in line with what I would expect when listening to prog music. Um, and it totally mm. works. The melodies are so well written, so well crafted. They go in interesting places against the grain of what the music's playing, but not discordantly. So I loved all that. The production, also a delight on this one. You pick out in instrumentation very, very, very well. The bass tone's filthy in parts, but in other parts, they rein that back in. The guitar work it in parts as well, specifically at the beginning of the album, uh, like on tracks like Mine, is, is, you know, it's really filthy and heavy, but then they will go into clean sections and experiment there as well. Uh, the drum production's brilliant as well. It just has this really organic, kind of earthy tone that I enjoy from this sort of music. The the length of the songs as well is what kind of surprised me. Very few of these songs outwith things that are an intro or a kind of little interlude reworking like uh, Cots, uh, which I think is track six, um, are under six minutes long. None of them feel six minutes long at all. Like they, they breeze by, mostly because the band are just, they're, they're taking their time, they're feeling the songs out, they're you know taking you places of what they're, what they're doing and I found them very rewarding uh, especially by about the third listen where I was actually picking out all the little uh, kind of eccentricities that the band were putting in just like you're talking about little rounding off segments that they do just sounding great it just really 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 works with their sound I also think they have a I was going to say like a singular vision, but they, they sound effortlessly confident about how they mix their music. Which, like, it doesn't surprise... Like, had you asked me after listening to this, is this a debut, I would have went, no, <laughs> these guys are well-versed. Because they make transitions just like... Th this song all was supposed, was supposed to go this way, and, you know, I'm surprised you didn't think it was going that way. They, they do it very, very, very well. 
the work and the vocals are what makes this band stand out from essentially most of the bands in the genre because they do have heavier elements they do have kind of the mid-range melodies they, they take it off in other directions and the inclusion of the organ on track three like i had me like you know me any organ appears in the music i am a happy man um, and it's one of those things where I'm acutely aware that, mostly because I'm a friend of yours, Dave, I'm acutely aware that everyone is not like me, um, and a lot of people don't like organs when they come into music. Totally fits here. And you get a blast of it that they don't really ever revisit after that, but they don't have to revisit it after that. It worked in that song, and that's what it's used for. And that, to me, is, once again, it's those elements of songwriting that I love. It's the, it's the idea to use something to benefit the song as opposed to it being a gimmick or something they feel they have to bring in in every single song after that. So it's just it's still a, another level of really well-crafted songwriting. I'll kind of side with you again. Winter to me is the, is the weird song on the album. It comes at the midway mark and it kind of feels like mm. it's the one that's maybe least inspired out of all of them. It's still a great song. And upon the third listen at this, it's the one that I kept coming back to in that there's just something in that track that doesn't match the same flair as the rest of the, the album. I'm not entirely sure what it is. I really like the last track. Uh, mm. Sleeping Beauty to me works really, really well as a closing track. Um, mostly because it, it is, I've said it before, to me, if you, like a closing track can go a couple of different ways, but if a band wants to experiment and try something completely different, do that on the last track. Don't do that on track three, right? You know what I mean? Never do that. Like, you always leave that to the end because on some level, it's what you're leaving someone with, which I know some people are like, well, that works as a negative if it sounds too different to what's coming before. But also to me, it's the bit where a band, you've done all your hard work, You've given the listener everything that you want. That last track's yours. You do what you want with that. Um, it used to be a prominent thing in new metal, uh, where like the last track in a new metal release would be weird and fucking avant-garde or different or whatever, um, because you could do that because you've done everything else. And that kind of fit, there was that a level of that, like specifically on the the, the, the vocals, which were a bit harsher, a bit edgier. Um, and it's a bit longer, and it worked for me. I'd like, as like I say, as a closing track, it, it, it left me with an idea of, oh, this band's got a different sound that they could incorporate maybe in the next album, mm. or maybe it's harking back to something they did before. I don't know their material enough for that. Swim is a great album. I'd, like once again, as another band doing sludge music, and I feel like we've done a couple of these this year where I have used the sentence, doesn't sound like other sludge bands. Um, which now makes me think if there's a different like genre of sludge out there that we can put these guys into. They don't sound like anyone. There are elements that sound like other bands, but they, they don't... S- this album, I would not say, oh, well, it sounds totally like Church of Misery that you mentioned earlier on. There are, are elements in there in the production and the songwriting for sure, but they don't sound like Church of Misery. Um, so yeah, it's, it's an exciting find. Um... I'm, you know, I, I will, I've returned to this album more than I usually do for review, re- reviews on this. I've, I've listened to it five times, um, and there's something about it that just keeps tying me back in. I think it's the melodies. I think it's the the vocals are so different to what mm. bands like this usually have. I think it's just some. And once again, if you can sing like this, fucking sing. You know what I mean? The guy's got an amazing range. So yeah, I I, I thoroughly enjoyed this. Uh, Kyle. Yeah, um, I, as you know, I make notes on albums when I'm listening to them, and I write them down. And my first note on this one says, "Oh fuck yeah!" <laughs> <laughs> I I really like it. I love the instrumental opening. The whole first song is four minutes of just instruments, and then on the second song, the vocals come in. I'm like, "That's fucking brilliant!" I'd never heard of these. Well, I think I'd, I think I'd heard the Montezuma's Revenge like phrase, but mm. never realised it was a band. So I'd never heard the band before. And I, I'm going to just say, I think I'm a closet sludge fan. <laughs> and I think I'm just going to come out of the closet. Because, holy shit, every sludge like Doom band we've listened to recently, I've been absolutely in love with. And this is no different. So <laughs> the bass is amazing. If there's yeah. nothing else in this album, just listen to the bass. It's so clear and present and amazing. It's played really well and it serves the songs. It's not overplayed, certainly not underplayed. 
and it really stood out to me as a bassist doing exactly what a bassist should do. The guitars are there, and that fuzzy, crazy, overly driven, over-fuzzed guitar tone is absolutely disgusting, and it made me smile from ear to ear. I look like a little joker running around the place. <laughs> Just all of it, the whole thing. They've got synth in there and stuff as well. Like the end of the uh, end of the intro song, they've got all this crazy synth stuff, and it just it sounds great. It's really good. It's not like your typical synthy. It's it sounds like '70s synth, but f f but for a modern era, if you know what I mean. I don't know. It's like it's definitely got influences from way back then, but they've made it sound more like mm. today's cool sort of music. But it works super well, and I'm really really happy I've discovered them through the podcast <laughs> so I'm, I'm definitely going to go back to this if this isn't on my end of year list I, I there must have been some amazing stuff come out because I really really enjoyed it really did I think I'm just yeah just loved it I mean I can't really say there was I agree there was a bit of a lull in the middle but for me it was fine because the beginning was so strong and the end was so strong too especially that last track was like what yeah <laughs> where, did he come out, where did he come out with this from but it's still good so I'm going to yeah. go back and listen to the rest of the stuff since they've been around since 2004. <laughs> so let's hope they've got some more good stuff and I can absolutely think they do because they're very, very good at playing. Yeah. Mm. Nice. Uh, okay, so ratings for uh, this new one from Montezuma's Revenge. Um, yeah, as I said before, I really enjoyed this. Um, I had a little issue in the middle of the album with that kind of those two tracks together. I think maybe if they just even split them, you know, Winter and Cots, maybe just split them up, maybe put Cots somewhere else. Um, I just felt it was too kind of um, it was too kind of soft and gentle for too long on, on the album at that point. I just it was just I kind of lost interest for a little bit. Um, and that last track, I did enjoy it. I did like it, but it, it did feel different. Um, style-wise, which is fine, and but also there was something in the production as well that just sounded a bit different to the rest of the album. Um, so for me, um, a thoroughly enjoyable album. I would definitely recommend you check it out. Um, if you like your your sludge with a bit of melody, um, you know, and, and it's not predictable either. There's, it does take you on different kind of paths throughout the album. Um, I'll probably go probably four out of five for me on this one. Uh, Duncan, what are you thinking? I'm coming in exactly the same as you. I think it's a... Uh, uh, a remarkable little album that really that you know what's really exciting is in the last three or four podcasts the you know the phrase Russian band has suddenly become a thing that we talk about now <laughs> and it turns out their music scene is fucking great um, because I've yet to hear one that I dislike yeah. um, and they're putting their own spin on everything and really interesting spins on it, and this is another example. They've taken what is inherently an American genre, and they brought like swaths of that there, but they've personalised it, changed it, and made it sound just like really, really, really clever and engaging. Uh, yeah, it's a, a, like I say, it's an album I'll definitely come back to throughout the year. So a four out of five from this guy. Nice, Kyle. I'm gonna go with four and a half out of five because nice. it was just. I really liked it that much. I really, really did. Excellent. Uh, this one drops on July 23rd on DTH Records. If you want to check out the band, it's facebook.com forward slash MNTZM. Uh, that is the review. Hope you liked it. Um, let us know what you think. Any comments about the review, uh, about the album, any tracks you've heard so far from the band, let us know what you think. Happy to hear your thoughts and opinions on this one. But do check it out when it comes out on the 23rd of July. That is the review.